What's up again guys? Yo. Although this is the sequel to my advanced mount stats vid. I titled it as overhaul because it's more like a redux of it. Since a few pets that I've mentioned there didn't come into fruition. Namely the wolf and the strider. And these are their stats. Apparently many are still hoping that they'd be released in the future because they are as cool as freak. But before we begin, be sure to hit on the subscribe button for more great videos. Alright, these are all the pets that have been released here in Southeast Asia. Notice my labels. F stands for free. P is for pay to win ish, but attainable. And S is for seasonal and purely pay to win. The reason why the lion and the elephant are labeled as P, though they were somehow seasonal too, is because their resources, flutes, stones and fragments, can still be drawn from this bundle, which can be purchased via 700 rubies as saps. Now, these are their probabilities. Be aware of the flutes though. Many have blown tens of thousands of rubies on these and had no luck. Then ranted at the forum. As per crafting summoning stones, what separates the lion from the elephant on whose less pay to win ish is that there's another way to craft lion stones. Via common bear and horse stones and scrolls of alchemy. Whereas elephant stones rely entirely on the bundle. Now with the groundwork laid. Let's correlate that with stats and what are the ideal pets. Above are the stats of all pets on max grade and level. Their stats have been arranged from the most important to the crappiest. Now let's remove the pay to win pets. The lion stays because it's more feasible for free to play gamers than the elephant. As for the ideal pets, let's categorize them into two. A fence type and deaf type. The best deaf type is the beetle. And the best off type is the lion. But what if you don't have the lion yet? Who's gonna be your off type? The bear. Why? I've already explained this on the prequel of this vid. But let's repeat the rationalization here. The difference between the Kukurin's attack and the bear's is only 108. At higher levels when your attack could be at 100,000 plus. Do you think 108 will be significant? As per resilience the bear has 938. And the Kukurin has none. So a no brainer there. Right. Then maybe the HP regen of the Kukurin will save it. But is that more important than resilience? We all know that resilience and penetration resides at the high echelons of priority stats paralleling with critical rate and resist. On the other hand, in its category, being a stat of sustainability, HP regen is even outperformed by HP drain by a mile if wielded by damager classes. So HP regen doesn't save the Kukumran after all. As per offense, the bear is clearly the next best thing after the lion. Okay, let's do a mid-roll. A cutscene from the main questline. Ha ha ha. Oh no, dying already. Save me, please. Until I'm I'll be a good use. Isn't that a cursed nebulite? <laughs> no! Stop, Elizabeth! You can't use that power! Shut up, Theodore! You We have to destroy that no matter what! <laughs> oh no! It's too late, Theodore! <laughs> Alright. On the new pet support system. All pets that aren't on the support status partially provide 30% of their stats as passive bonus. Thus, owning more pets translates to more partial stat bonuses. If you put a pet on the mount status, the 30% will be in status quo. But its move speed will apply. 
if you're gonna be facing a situation that calls for more offense and you are the lion. Go for the lion as both mount and support. If you don't have the lion yet, it's beetle bear. In contrast, if the situation calls for more defense, it's beetle beetle. By the way, I didn't include the seasonal slash pay to win pets here because I don't give a flying freak. Ha ha ha. Anyway, always equip your strongest pet gear set on the one which is on the support status. Because 100% of its stats will apply. And while in the topic of pet gear, as soon as you SR level 20 apiece, you can build another one for another pet. Also, the stats of all gear equipped onto other pets counts as part of that 30% bonus. As per substats, I favorite critical rates and resist on all my pet gear. But this really depends on you. Others change substats when the gear is already high grade. But it's much better to start at low grade gear with your preferred substats so you don't have to spend rubies at all. This method beats waiting for a high grade gear with the substat that you want. Especially if you're building your first set. Don't worry, as long as you're active daily, that C to B grade will become SR in no time. On enhancement and substats. Enhancement only improves the values of the main stats and not the substats. What improves substats is upgrade. Similar to gems. Lastly, we move on to the number of summoning stones needed for upgrading pets. For the best pets, lion and beetle, it's easy because you'll own them at higher grades already. And by far here in Southeast Asia, the beetle is the fastest. Because its resources are obtained via open fortress siege, which happens six times a week. By the way, as per salvaging to acquire advancement stones. Here are the rates. Sadly, beetle stones can't be salvaged or sold. Maybe the devs rationale on this is that they weren't acquired conventionally. Via achievements. You get them for free. But come on, devs. Give us something. Scraps. Pots. Herbs. Anything. Ha ha ha. And that's all there is for now. Thanks for watching. Also, check out other videos from Sabbath Clan Philippines and subscribe. Best of luck for all y'all pet lovers. Peace out yo.